Uh-oh, everybody, another thing happened on Twitter. Mary Catherine Starr is an illustrator and graphic designer whose comic, Mom Life, got roasted real hard in that bird zone. Mom Life comics briefly became what users affectionately call Twitter's main character, the person that everyone has chosen to mock until they get bored and move on to the next one. An endless cycle of destroying people's whole situation for a while to provide a couple of memes that are dated within a week. Remember Bean Dad? Of course you don't. But I remember. I remember them all, because I don't have much of a personal life. I got my sticky little fingers on the pulse of several weeks ago. Hey, did you see this one? This is the one that made everybody mad at her. Let's just take a look at this comic and think for a minute. See what all the hubbub is about. Whether or not this woman deserves our undying hatred. Spoiler alert, probably not. On top, the caption reads, One of the many differences between me and my husband. In the first panel, wife looks at a peach. She says, oh look, the last ripe peach. I'll save it for the kids. They love peaches so much. In the second panel, husband looks at that same peach and says, oh look, the last ripe peach. I'll use it as a special treat in my daily smoothie. Wife thinks about the kids first, but her oafish husband merely seeks to satisfy his own peach needs. Men, am I right, ladies? This is a pattern in many of her comics, pointing out the ways that she and her husband approach household duties, mostly those relating specifically to child rearing, very differently. As in... She does them, and, and sometimes he doesn't. Often the joke is about how frustrated the mom is by her husband's carelessness. Now, of course that spiraled into the same death loop of misogynist vitriol that any criticism of a woman or any situation involving a woman on the internet really will degenerate into. The weirdos, incels, and Andrew Tate likers, ah, but I repeat myself, found this comic, and Mary's Instagram account was flooded with hateful messages and death threats because... The, the reason that is, the thing she did wrong, the, the thing that everybody was mad about, is that she complained about her husband's peach habits. Fucking get her. F kill her. I'm not really here to talk about that. I think most people, especially those of you in my audience, can broadly recognize that that kind of overt harassment is bad, to say the least. Those that aren't, aren't going to be persuaded by anyone wearing eyeshadow, so I'm not gonna bother. I know the culture war has us all at each other's throats, but probably don't send death threats to somebody's mom. That seems like common ground we can all agree on. We can all agree that threats aren't warranted, no matter what your feelings are about peaches. But, like, I saw this happen in real time. It wasn't just overt misogynists making fun of this comic. People all over my feed, people I like and follow, and at least one person who is literally me, who to the best of my knowledge are not big sexist babies, even a lot of women's is, were piling on. And it's weird, right? Because normally, when these types of culture war issues crop up online, I tend to be in the self-righteous SJW bubble, where we, we point at stuff when we go, that, that's problematic. I, I, and I noticed it was problematic, so I'm a good person. And then we act like we solved the problem and everybody owes us thanks and praise. The narrative that formed around these comics didn't just make dopey sexist dudes mad, it seemed to make even us shrill, feminist, pronoun and bio havers mad. Mad is maybe the wrong word. Charitably, I'd say annoyed, but like snide. We were snide about it. Not everybody, mind you. Some, more perceptive people, were warning from the jump that the framing being presented about these comics was actually fucked up and weird, and it would inevitably lead to the aforementioned misogynist death loop. Like Tiresias before them, their warnings went unheeded. It's not my intent merely to point at a shitty thing that happened and say, hey look, a shitty thing happened, and then we can all point fingers and make people feel guilty or act superior. Maybe comfort ourselves about our own complicity in systems of oppression by performatively attacking people we feel are worse than us in this regard. Many times in the past, I have fallen into this trap of seeking validation for criticizing bad behavior without any sense of charity. That might feel good, but I don't think it helps, really. I would like to move beyond just getting up on my high horse and wagging my finger. I think there's a lot we can learn from this story, and I don't think that people who feel attacked or shamed are particularly inclined to want to learn things. I don't want to argue in circles. I don't want to put anyone on the defensive because I don't know better than anyone else. I'm not a better person than anybody else, clearly. The issue here, as I see it, comes down to how these comics were framed. 
that Mary hated her husband, and rather than seeking out a divorce for their irreconcilable views on when one should and should not eat a peach, she chose instead to passive-aggressively complain about him in comic form. It was like a, are the straights okay kind of joke? You know, like, why do straight people hate their partner so much? What's that about? Just like... Don't be married to somebody if you're occasionally bothered by their bad habits. If you've ever been in a long-term relationship, you should know that's pretty bad advice. Yeah, don't hang on to resentment, obviously, don't dwell on the small stuff, but if you're expecting your partner to never annoy you, you might be expecting too much. And when you take this one comic on its own outside of its original context, it does kind of look like that, right? Like, hey, lady, let the man eat a peach. You're allowed to eat peaches in your house. That's not a crime. You can buy more peaches. The kids don't care. Kids care not for peaches. These days, kids just want Robux and TikTok clout. They won't eat a peach unless you put the pink sauce on it. And another thing, and another thing is why are you even so upset about it? You could have left a note. You could have told him not to eat the peach. It's not a damn mind reader. Why are you hassling him? What, what else are you mad about? You probably think he's too short and not a good speller. And I don't know what I'm doing during cunnilingus. And this is definitely about you and not a projection of my insecurities or issues with women. So don't try and turn it around on me. If you look at the comic in its original context, as an Instagram post, it's accompanied by the following blurb. Happy peach season to everyone except my husband. Peach emoji, eye rolling emoji. And I know we moms need to stop being martyrs, but when it comes to fruit, I just can't help it. I have to save it for them, shrug emoji. Also, is there anything more annoying than someone using fresh, ripe, seasonal fruit in a smoothie when you have frozen fruit that works just as well? Ugh. This is an old comic that I made in 2020, plus my husband still does this all the time, so please don't worry about him feeling publicly shamed. If anything, this comic has emboldened him, cry laughing emoji. That doesn't sound to me like somebody who's really upset by the situation. It sounds like she's poking fun at herself just as much as husband for thinking in these terms. She's not saying husband is an asshole for eating the peach, but that he isn't burdened by the same neurotic impulse to always put the kid's hypothetical interests above his own. She even followed this comic up with a, with a post encouraging mothers to remember to treat themselves and just eat the damn peach. The message here is not, why does my dickhead husband eat all my damn peaches? Can anything be done? Can we stop this peach devouring monster man? It's, why is it that I don't feel like I can eat a peach and just enjoy it? Why does that come with all sorts of guilt and shame for me but not for him. Good question. I too would like to know. I think she should be allowed to eat the peach if she wants to. I think everybody deserves a peach every now and then. I don't care if it's incredibly brave of me to say this, but I think all the moms out there deserve peaches. Stop applauding, we've got a lot to get through. Also, the thing about frozen peaches is a good point. That's annoying, he should use the frozen peaches. You don't need a fresh ripe peach for a smoothie, it's just gonna make your smoothie warmer. The shame thing though, the main point, uh, this speaks to a recurring theme in these comics about the ways that men are often socialized to avoid doing their fair share of domestic work, and women are guilted and shamed into taking on more than their fair share. Being the person who has to think about how the kids are gonna get special treats is, itself, a sort of emotional labor. On its own, it's relatively trivial. But it's not on its own, it's everything. Women are often expected to not only do more cooking, cleaning, and child nurturing, but also to be the family planners, to keep track of details that men are not expected to remember or care about. Like, think about the stereotype of men forgetting their wedding anniversaries. In this comic, wife feels like she has to think of the kids first, always. And so, she denies herself peaches and acts like, as she describes it, a martyr. Conversely, the husband does not feel that pressure, because the world just doesn't condition fathers to think that way. Fathers are not, generally, made to feel inadequate based on the care given to their children. Since women are more likely to be the primary caregivers of children, whether they'd like to be or not, the marketing for any sort of child-rearing goods or advice or lifestyle brands is targeted at women. And that all of that is putting aside the centuries of cultural inertia of, of women being essentially domestic slaves whose sole domain of influence was the household and the raising of children. Something which Mom Life Comics is particularly interested in helping mothers resolve by encouraging them to celebrate their victories and let go of unrealistic expectations. To just eat the damn peach. None of this is to say that men can't or don't often feel these same feelings of shame and inadequacy, but that they disproportionately affect women. Part of the reason for that is that in heterosexual relationships, men often do not perform as much domestic labor as their partners. They are not culturally expected to, and therefore often, sometimes unconsciously, offload household and parenting duties onto their partners. 
These are all generalities. Even using terms like man, woman, mother, father are generalities. Obviously, all people and all families are different. I'm speaking in broad strokes about a general trend. There are obviously exceptions. Here, husband doesn't have to think about feeding the kids. He doesn't need to worry about whether or not they have enough peaches, because he knows wife will take care of it for him. This is a pattern of behavior that extends beyond simply peaches, to things like carrying groceries, doing laundry, wrapping Christmas presents, etc. These comics were framed as this one woman passive-aggressively trying to dunk on her hubbo for Instagram points. But I think a more reasonable interpretation would be that she's asking her audience to reflect on why it is that men feel that this behavior is appropriate, and to encourage women to expect better from male partners if they have them, and to vocalize their concerns to said partners. Now that doesn't make husband a bad guy. There are plenty of other mom life comics about how husband is a loving, kind partner. He's just a guy being a dude, living in a society that teaches dudes bad habits and fucked up ideas. Despite my best efforts, I myself am not a woman. Not quite a man either, if I had to put it into words, gender wise, I'd say I'm like half cupcake, half toilet, roughly. Nonetheless, several of the criticisms that wife makes of her partner's behavior could just as easily have applied to me at some point in my life. Probably many of them apply even now in some ways that I'm not conscious of. You can't help it. Growing up living that hashtag dude life, you internalize a lot of fucked up ideas that take hard work to unpack. I don't say this to excuse bad behavior on husband's part, or on my part for that matter, simply to point out the bare bones reality of the fact that men grow up with fucked up ideas, and sometimes that leads them to toxic behavior. Often literally. Um, hey, um, just a quick word of warning. This, uh, this segment right here is about to get real gross and weird. It's a lot of poop talk coming out of this toilet cupcake, so just go ahead and skip to the time code here if you don't want to hear about that. And you probably don't. I don't know why I included it. I'm editing this video right now. I could cut it out right now, but I'm not going to. And I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna come out and say it. A surprising amount of heterosexual men don't wash their assholes. Now I know this is sample bias, but you can go to basically any relationship advice subreddit and you'll find women asking if they're being too demanding by insisting that their partners wash their asses. And those guys with the dirty butts. They'll make all sorts of excuses saying, like, it's gay to touch a man's asshole, even their own. Or that excessive grooming is too feminine, as though washing your asshole is excessive somehow. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's not a choice that men are making to be cruel, but nonetheless, it is their responsibility and mine to correct that behavior within ourselves. Though I must be clear, I maintain a clean asshole to the best of my abilities. Keep it ship shape down there. And the less doodly amongst us have every right to find that frustrating. They're the ones who have to put up with our shit, again, sometimes literally. Often, even from family members and loved ones. There's a few ways they could deal with that. They could cut loose every single dude in the world, half the Earth's population, with the lion's share of money and resources, I might add. Or just accept that they gotta do a bunch of free work for them forever. Or they just gotta try to teach them to behave better. They shouldn't have to but it's the best of the three bad options available to them, and that sucks. That must be frustrating as fuck. Therefore, I think it's unfair to suggest that because wife is frustrated by these habits, that she therefore doesn't love husband, or is being cruel by speaking about husband's behavior publicly. It's super fucked up to suggest a couple of strangers should get a divorce based on some comics one of them made complaining that her husband doesn't do enough laundry. Is that really how you should handle conflict in a marriage? Just leave him, blow up her entire life, put her kids through a messy and traumatic custody battle, or accept that he cannot change any annoying or unhelpful behavior ever. It's beyond his control, so any expression of frustration is inherently toxic. Simply live with the person you got and accept they'll never do laundry more than they do now. Don't like that? Go marry a laundry doer or hold your tongue. You can't learn to do laundry more. Everyone is born with a certain laundry capacity and it's fixed from birth. No, that's a bunch of silly stuff I just said. The healthy thing to do is to communicate your needs to your partner, explain how their behavior affects you, how it makes you feel, and then give them the opportunity to learn and grow. And we know that in real life, Mary did this because she made this fucking comic about it. That's what the comic is. She made this comic, and presumably, her husband will, at the very least, read that comic and realize he fucked up, laundry-wise. But more likely, she talked to him before making a comic about it, because that's kind of common sense, isn't it? 
Otherwise, it'd be pretty awkward for her when he read the comic and was like, yo, hey, uh, just saw the new comic. Good stuff. Loved it. Your art style is really distinct. It's really coming along. Um, hey, uh, how, how come you didn't tell me you were upset about laundry? Why are you just roasting me about laundry out of nowhere? They probably discussed it before she made the comic is my point. People just jump to the conclusion that she's trying to shame her husband or take out her frustrations against him by making him look bad or whatever. But a more reasonable interpretation is pointing out the double standard to show other mothers that they are not alone in dealing with those problems, that they're not being difficult or nagging by expecting better. I mean, she's making a personal blog comic about the difficulties of motherhood and therefore is talking about the difficulties of motherhood, presumably. If she had said something in this comic that her husband felt was a step too far or too hurtful, he's an adult man capable of having a conversation with his own wife about that. He doesn't require us to defend him. But the thing is, why would we? He's in the wrong. He should do more laundry. I know very few things about him and that's one of the key things I do know. Am I expected not to believe wife? I have seen much evidence in my life that in fact, Women often do more domestic labor in a household than their male partners. This would not be a surprising state of affairs to me. When I hear her complain about this, I don't think, ah, this lying shrew, making up stories for clout. Instead, I think, ah, yeah, it's that thing that happens all the time. Why, 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 why does he get any sympathy? Like if she said something abusive or mean-spirited, sure, yeah, that's, you know, don't do that. If instead of what she actually said, she said, yo, my husband doesn't do laundry and he really should be doing more laundry because I'm hotter than him and I could get a way hotter husband. Easy. No problem. Anyone looking for a hot laundry wife? Yeah, that thing I just imagined would be a horrible thing to say. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad about poking fun at these comics. There are degrees to all of these things and while the criticism definitely got out of hand, it's okay to make jokes. That's okay, generally. Probably a lot of the people who took part in sharing and making fun of these comics didn't do it out of some sort of secret desire to hurt women or out of some unexamined prejudice. Because the joke of this woman being irrationally angry about peaches is very funny, even if it doesn't reflect the reality of what the original comic is trying to express. There's room for absurdist reinterpretation there. That's fine, in my entirely irrelevant opinion. But... Attributing passive aggression and controlling behavior to a woman? Just trying to express that she's fed up with the unfair expectations put on her as a mother and how she has internalized those expectations to the point that it affects her mental health? I mean, that isn't just unfair to her, which to be clear would be bad enough. It also feeds into some ugly sexist stereotypes, namely the nagging wife who's a real busybody and won't just let her husband relax. A lot of women are gonna see that and whether they consciously realize it or not, absorb the message that if they don't accept a man doing less of the household work or just being selfish in general, taking all of the peaches, and if they don't accept it without complaint, they're gonna be a target too. They're gonna be ostracized and mocked. Now, I mean, obviously we can all agree that men should do more of the household work, but also if you, if you think about it, if you think about it, it's just as bad when women complain that they don't. Sure, it's a huge problem, but that doesn't mean we, anybody should ever talk about it. That, that's annoying. And to be honest, it kind of is. It is annoying to hear people complain, even when their complaints are valid. It, it's still kind of annoying. Maybe that makes me a huge dick, but I know for a fact a lot of people relate because that seems to be this nice woman's cardinal sin in the eyes of her detractors. Lady, I got my own problems. Leave me out of your Christmas wrapping drama. But it's probably not as annoying as having to do more housework than your partner forever. Having to not only do all of the breastfeeding and pregnancies, but also most of the stuff required to keep an infant alive when your partner could be helping, but isn't. Because instead of a few seconds of being annoyed while I'm reading a comic strip that literally nobody forced me to look at, it's hours out of her day every day for the rest of her life. We would reduce the overall amount of annoyance in the world by fixing that problem first. And bonus, the complaints would end too, because the thing they're complaining about would go away. And so, it is the prerogative of people who face that problem to do whatever it takes to get the rest of us to fix it, even if we find their methods bothersome. If we don't want to hear about it anymore, they probably don't want to talk about it anymore. So just do more laundry, clean the tub, change a diaper. Problem solved. Again, I don't, I don't mean to sound self-righteous here. I made a couple of jokes at this lady's expense too. It's a funny meme, albeit one that 
really fucked up an innocent person's life for no good reason. Men enjoy a certain benefit of the doubt online, and non-men receive a great deal of scrutiny and distrust. If you'd like the world to be a fairer place, and I think most people would, situations like this provide a useful case study for how to avoid this behavior, to ask ourselves why we resent women just for recognizing when men treat them poorly. I'm not trying to make anyone feel like bad people, because I'm, I'm, I'm expressly not talking to the bad people. I'm not bothering with the hate brigade that, that flooded Mary's DMs with threats and vitriol. Fuck those people. Fuck them. Let them die in a hole. I, I don't care about them. You can't reason with them. They're just an ever-present terror that the internet Pandora's boxed all over our lives forever. I'm talking to the rest of us, the ones that kind of enabled them. At this point, we all know better, right? Like, we know that you can't really criticize this kind of feminism 101 content in a good-natured way, because it inevitably leads to the misogynist death loop. You don't get these overtly misogynist incel creeps without the entitlement that the offending mom life comics criticized. I mean, the fact that she has to deal with this demonstrates the dire stakes of her exact point. She complained that she felt shamed and then thousands of strangers emerged from nowhere to shame her for that. This video won't undo the narrative that has evolved around these comics, and maybe you still feel like Peach Mom was being unreasonable for whatever reason. Fine. Okay. If you do, I'd like to leave you with one question, and I don't expect an answer. And, and I don't really want an answer, because I don't want to argue with you. Can you change an unreasonable person's behavior with reason? I don't think so. I think the best thing to do when confronted with someone being unreasonable is to listen and try to understand what brought them to that point. I don't think people start unreasonable. I think they become unreasonable when their reasonable concerns are not listened to. I don't think this woman is unreasonable. But if you do, ask yourself, did you listen? In conclusion, before you comment it, yes, of course I believe that women are always right, and any criticism of a woman, any woman in the world ever in history, makes you a sexist, even if the woman's a murderer. And yes, you caught me. I'm only making this video at all because I secretly believe it will somehow give me some sort of sexual leverage over feminists. Because with my weak beta physiognomy and lack of provider skills, I cannot compete fairly in the sexual marketplace, so I have to pull all sorts of tricks and stunts like this. You don't need to type it out. I, you're right. I, you're, you got it. And obviously, also, I should, I should mention that I'm the real sexist. That goes without saying. And I, I, do, I do hate all men. And, I, and it's probably uh, due to my bad relationship with my father. And it is my sincere belief that the skull of every man on Earth should be fitted with a tracking device. And in the event that they should ever taste the flesh of a ripe peach, that device should send a signal to a suborbital laser satellite, which instantly vaporizes them. Eyeballs. Did somebody say eyeballs? Hello and welcome to the Eyeball Zone. Here in the Eyeball Zone, we save the last ripe eyeballs for small creators who need eyes on their work. They do love them so much. Well, not this time. Get your own eyeballs, you freaks. You little scamps. Get out of here. This time we're looking at a fundraiser. Nick from the Pink Spots podcast reached out to me for a fundraiser for their sister, who, after her husband suffered a stroke, has struggled to keep her family afloat due to her own worsening health, and the overall failure of the social safety net to provide any meaningful help. I wish I could tell you that I consciously chose this because it tied into the video's themes of the difficulties of motherhood. That's just a coincidence. I, I originally was going to do a video about Star Trek or some shit. Nonetheless, my little slimies, we have an opportunity to use the internet to do a good thing. So do, wouldn't that bring a, an excellent sense of balance to this story? Links in the description. I know it's tough out there, so if you can't afford to donate anything, don't sweat it. But I would ask that maybe you spread it around. Maybe, you know, share it on social media or whatever. You never know. So we won't be highlighting the work of a small leftist creator, except maybe pink spots this week. Except psych, of course we will. Did you think, did you really think I wouldn't let the eyeballs feast? And I present to you an eyeball zone first. This person not only did not ask to be featured on the eyeball zone, they were not recommended by anyone else. I found this video out in the wild on my lonesome. 
In white liberalism, the politics of enabling evil, Ali Nish connects a lot of dots that I had never really put together before about how the liberal drive to maintain civility over justice, something I have discussed a great deal on this channel, is a reflection of a larger pattern of passive white supremacy and indifference to the suffering of others. Somehow, this video is not only insightful, but also not a huge bummer. And if you think about it, me prioritizing my own feelings during a video like this is kind of a reflection of that exact passivity I was just criticizing, but I don't know, maybe it'll get more people to watch the video. Whatever. Fart, fart, fart. His other videos are really good too, he's just a good channel all around. And he only has like 3.6 thousand subscribers at the time of this recording, so go! Go! Fix this! Do you have a small leftist project you'd like to see featured here, on the Eyeball Zone? Send no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with the word eyeball somewhere in the subject line and pertinent details like your pronouns, and perhaps you will find yourself trapped here in the eyeball zone. Hey, I hope this one wasn't too loosey, or also I hope it wasn't too goosey as well. I wanted to put out a small one, a little video as a treat. I got a Patreon, all that shit, patreon.com slash thoughtslime. I drew these cartoons in the background for that. That's why they're there, if you were wondering. I draw things. In fact, I'm doing a new thing on the weekends where I stream myself following my dream of making a little comic book, and I encourage everyone in chat to share the, their victories and how they're doing things that they're scared to suck at. It's called Weekends, but like spelled with an A. Like weakness is. So come check, have it, come and check it out. It's been a lot of fun. Peaches look like butts. I didn't make a single joke about it the whole time, but I knew. I always knew.